Strasbourg, grad koji je simbol pomirenja Europe nakon dva svjetska rata, nalazi se na istoku Francuske, na lijevoj strani Rajne i ima oko 270 tisuća stanovnika, kao dvije naše rijeke. Prekrasni gradski centar je po zaštitom UNESCO, a tu se nalazi Vijeće Europe, Europski sud za ljudska prava i Europski parlament. Dragi prijatelji, koliko smo puta čuli da Europska unija donosi neki zakon koji se tiče i vas i mene i koliko puta smo se zapitali ko su ti ljudi koji nam kroje sudbinu. Evo me u Strasburu i za mene Europski parlament i sad ću iz prve ruke saznat kako izgleda Europarlament, što se u njemu dešava i ko su ti ljudi u kojima ovise i naši životi. Ajmo! Europski parlament i njegovih 8000 zaposlenih djeluje u tri grada. U Luksemburgu je dio administracije parlamenta, prevoditelji, kadrovska, u Briselu se zastupnici sastaju u parlamentarnim odborima, a u Strasburu se održavaju plenarne sjednice i to 12 godišnje. Za sve vas i nas koji nikad nismo bili u Europskom parlamentu, tu je simpatična Cecilia koja će nam pokazati sve njegove tajne. Hi Cecilia, Hello, how are you? How are you? Hi. Good Hi. to see you and welcome to the European Parliament in Thank Strasbourg. Thank you very much. Yes. This is the Agora Courtyard, and it's named after a Polish MEP who deceased sh shortly after he became a member. Oh. It's like a community hall, a meeting place, exactly before you actually enter into the building. If you turn around, you see a nice uh, glass sculpture behind you. It's uh, named United Earth, and it's supposed to symbolize the unity and openness of the European Union, that it's constant in transition, basically, and it's open to the world. Oh, nice. It also remind me to football ball. Very much so, yes. But you probably have a few football fans in the house, actually, no doubt. Okay, shall we enter into the building itself? Yes, please. Parlament koristi pet zgrada koje nose imena poznatih Europljana. Winston Churchill, Václav Havel, Salvador de Madariaga te Pierre Flimlin. Glavna zgrada koje i vječnica zove se Louis Weiss po francuskoj novinarki, feministici i političarki a otvorena je 1999. U storenj visok 60 metara ima čak 200 tisuća kvadrata s iznenađujuće puno zelenila. It's nice, you know, it makes the environment less sterile and uh, friendly, warm. What about all these bridges? You have more bridges than Venice? Yes, more bridges than in Venice. So the bridges are sort of connecting each floor. That's the, the point of it. And I guess it's supposed also to spread out people. Uh, and make air, make the building very airy. So, but it can be a bit confusing because you, you, know, you don't always remember which floor you have to get onto to cross over. Did you ever lose yourself here? Oh, absolutely, many times. Here's the European flag and the flag of EU member states. As you know, we are now 27 member states. After UK, Brexit left the European Union, we were 28 and now we are 27 members. What is your opinion about the Croatian flag? I think it tells the story of the young nation and its people. And which animal of these few animals on our flag <laughs> is your favorite? <laughs> oh, it has to be the goat. <laughs> you prefer our goat, Croatian Eastern goat. I like goats. I mean, they're really sturdy, stubborn, hardy animals, you know. They don't take much crap from anybody. I think that's a pretty good attitude. <laughs> and they can defend themselves when it's needed. <laughs> One of the best review of our flag ever. <laughs> yes. Europska unija je po površini nešto veća od Indije, a ima oko 500 milijuna stanovnika. Od toga je desetak milijuna Portugalaca. A upravo iz ove zemlje dolazi eurozastupnica Lidija Pereira. Rođena je 1991. Diplomirala je ekonomiju, magistrirala je Europske ekonomske studije, a članica je Europske pučke stranke. U EU parlament izabrana je 2019. i sigurno vas sad zanima koje su je karakteristike dovele ovdje. Courage, dedication and luck. Well, if we want to be consequential with the, the objectives that we set at the European level, we have to take action. And that's what I did prior to come to the European Parliament to do the first carbon neutral campaign uh, ever uh, in Portugal. So the commitment was to calculate the, the CO2 emissions uh, that I used with uh, an old van, a Volkswagen van, that was uh, going around the country. 
So we had to uh, offset to compensate the carbon emissions that we were uh, producing in order to uh, make sure that we had a carbon neutral campaign. And we did it by planting trees uh, in Portugal. Uh, we planted uh, 10, but we are doing more uh, to like every year uh, in respect to uh, the commitment that we set uh, because of all the travels that I make. So that's uh, what I'm doing. Lydia, što za tebe znači Europski parlament? Well, the European Parliament is the symbol of freedom, of democracy, of uh, human rights. And uh, the purpose for me is that I fight every day for these three uh, different uh, topics, values that define our European uh, citizenship. And one concrete example of that is, for example, the fight against climate change. The European Parliament has been very vocal about the need to change our habits, to adapt for the new paradigm, for a more uh, circular economy. And that's what we are doing here. We are defining the standards. We are being a global player in a, a fight that is a common fight, the fight against climate change. Um, but I'm also following um, uh, the Committee on uh, Economy and uh, Monetary Affairs. Uh, so I'm very much uh, working on uh, tax evasion, tax fraud, uh, making sure that we have the same standards, the same guidelines in the union to make sure that everyone pays its fair share um, and that we uh, fight uh, money laundering and things of the sort. No zanima me i od kakvog su materijala ljudi koji zastupaju naše interese u parlamentu. Konkretno, kakva je Lidija privatno, kao osoba? I play video games, a guitar and cooking. Well, I really like FIFA, uh, but I also like Need for Speed. And, uh, well, Super Mario is always a good option. Women are uh, more and more involved in uh, equally on different sectors in the society and football is not a is not uh, indifferent to, to us. And actually I played futsal and I'm a big football fan. Uh, my team is Porto. I always vote with my grandmother. We are registered in the, in the same uh, polling station. So uh, we always vote together. Since I was allowed to vote at, at the age of 18. <laughs> this is my Ferrari. Uh, it used to be because it, it got stolen uh, from the parliament. And I always try to, to go uh, by foot or by bike to the parliament, not to use uh, any, any transport and since it's walking distance. If the person who took my bike away uh, is uh, listening, please uh, bring it back because it was a, a very uh, dear bike to me. A fairer world and a fairer Europe and a fairer society. Lydia is one of 705 parliamentarians and parliamentarians Po čemu je Europarlament drugi po veličini u svijetu, poslije indijskog. Među njima je i 12 hrvatskih zastupnica i zastupnika, a svi su oni u parlamentu svrstani ne po nacionalnosti, već prema političkom opredjeljenju. And who are the people representing Europe and us then? Well, there are people from all walks of life, of all professions. Uh, this is what is the purpose of a, of a, of a multicultural, multilingual parliament. Some of them are pure specialists, others are less specialists, others become specialists when they're here. Uh, but they're all here to do one thing, to represent you and me in the European Parliament. And that's why it's important that we have elections so everybody can choose their representatives in the European Parliament. We have 24 working languages. And why is it so important with the languages? Yes, because anyone from the walks of life should and can be elected to the European Parliament and that person should be able to work here without having his or her hands tied back because of language. So you have the right to speak and listen to, to your language. I especially like the ones who are almost a bit like terriers, you know, who for their cause, who are really passionate for their cause. They usually become extremely knowledgeable. Uh, but another key for to have as well, I think, is also that they are um, they are also uh, understanding that what they do needs to come across to the citizens because there's no point if we all sit here and work and legislate and people don't understand what it means and what how it improves their lives. So I think a, a good politician also uh, understands that you need to communicate this and be very clear in what you say and in what you do. Za Veronik, europarlamentarku iz Francuske, sasvim je jasno što radi za nas. Ova sveučilišna profesorica i onkolog po zanimanju 
dobitnica najvišeg francuskog odlikovanja Legije časti, u parlamentu se strastveno bori za naše zdravlje protiv azbesta koji je uzrok raka. Why a cancer doctor? Probably because when I was 25, uh, one of my cousins, a very young uh, man, died from cancer and I was so moved that I thought I had something to do against it. Usprkos bogatoj karijeri te predavanju medicine u Lyonu i Kini, Veronique se odlučila za političko djelovanje u centrističkoj stranci Emanuela Macrona. Koja je motivacija za to? I have been spending my professional life fighting against cancer, so taking care of the health of my patients and I thought that after 60 years old I might change a little bit and commit myself into the political life to find another way to uh, uh, convince people that health is very important. The goal is to uh, improve prevention, tobacco, alcohol, physical activity and so on. It is to improve research on treatments, to improve equal access to treatments everywhere in Europe and even beyond Europe and also to work on the way people are followed up once cured uh, to come back to a normal life. Čuli smo od kolega da Veronik ima dva sina i da voli disco. Što još smijemo znati o njenim interesima? I like all kinds of music. Uh, from uh, you know disco to uh, Beethoven and Mozart, I like many many kinds of music. My favorite singer is Leonard Cohen. It's mostly French books. My favorite one is a very romantic one. It's called Le Grand Moulin. It's very popular in France. It's a love story. <laughs> uh, I like swimming. It's difficult to swim when you are a uh, map because there are few swimming pools in uh, Brussels. I don't know here, but I like swimming mostly in the summer. There is a sentence I like that says, when you are alone, you go quickly, but playing collective, you go further. I think it's very much the case in the parliament. Je li teže biti doktorica ili europarlamentarka? It is very different. It is another uh, another job, but I still work as a doctor every Friday morning. In both jobs, it's really um, a place where you have to commit. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of interactions with my assistants. How many assistants? There are three of them. And it also many interactions with other uh, maps, not only from my group, but also from other group and of course other countries. It's a lot of homework, it's a lot of readings, uh, taking uh, news from uh, everywhere in the world. A koji je konkretni posao vas i ostalih europarlamentarki? The work of a map is to react to a proposal from the Commission and to uh, draft what he wants more, what he wants less, what he wants different. So it's really uh, constructing a law uh, on the basis of a proposal from the Commission and then what I am going to do now, the negotiation takes place between the Commission, the Parliament here, and the Council, that is the member states, the governments, and these three have to converge to draw a European law. And here in Strasbourg, it's the time for votes. So voting is also a very important moment where you let people know what you think and what you want. Kako je zastupnica Veronik spomenula, zakoni koji kroje naše živote u Europskoj uniji donose se zakonodavnim postupkom u kojem Europski parlament izravno izabran i Vijeće Europske unije, predstavnici 27 država članica, imaju jednak utjecaj. 
Europska komisija podnosi zakonodavni prijedlog parlamentu i vijeću koji moraju postići dogovor o tekstu kako bi prijedlog postao zakon. So here you see a photo of two presidents. You have the president of the European Parliament, which is David Sassoli, he's an Italian social democrat, and you have the president of the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen. They like each other. Look at the, their arms. Yeah. Actually, he holds her arms. <laughs> He's holding on to her so she won't run away. <laughs> well, you know, uh, you have this institutional dynamic, of course. You have the triangle of the European Parliament, you have the Council, and then you have the European Commission. But in this triangle, there's a, a, a great dynamic, of course, and it's all based on discussions, negotiations. This is how you push democracy forward and compromise. Yeah, like in marriage. Yes, exactly, like in marriage. I know this story. <laughs> in marriage it takes two to tango, you know, but here it takes a bit more to tango. But anyway, it's about you know, finding the right rhythm in the tango. Did you know that the European Parliament, uh, direct elections to the European Parliament uh, take place since 1979? And all the way up until 1979, it was actually the national parliaments who elected the members to the assembly. But since 1979, it is actually the people, right, themselves, who go and elect me and the you. members, me and you, all of us, who elect the members to represent us in the European Parliament. Od 1979. do danas, samo su dvije žene bile izabrane za predsjednicu Europarlamenta. Obje francuskinje, Simone Weil i Nicole Fontaine. No stvari se popravljaju i danas je ovdje 41% parlamentarki ili 308, od koje vam predstavljamo i treću, Hanu Neumann, članicu zelenih iz Njemačke. Hana je studirala medijske studije i političke znanosti, a provela je i studijsku godinu na Filipinima. Ponosna je majka, troje djece. I have to admit I, I feel super privileged to now being a politician full time and being paid for it. Before that I needed to do it in between like the work and the kids and the sports and it was all over the place and now I can do it all the time and it's also a bit of a passion. I work on foreign policy and first of all I want to make sure that the diversity in this world out there will finally be able to do foreign policy because as of now it's just people with badges talking to people with badges and they're wearing black suits and ties and really the world is more colorful than that. Then I'm well trying to do everything possible that arms produced weapons produced in the European Union do not end up in the hand of dictators and just make wars worse. And I want to make sure that in our foreign policy we do everything to support all the other countries around the world to live up to their Paris climate commitments and to make sure that we stop climate change well not just in Europe but on a global scale. Hana je uz vanjsku politiku i okoliš angažirana i u pitanjima migrantske krize. I mean, first of all, it's, it's very clear and we see that in Germany, maybe you see that in Croatia as well. We need migrants. We need migrants to do certain jobs that no one else does. We need migrants for specific professions that we don't have enough people from. So rather than thinking of migrants as being a threat, we really need to embrace migrants coming here so that we can continue with our economic growth. And then there are refugees, so people that run from prosecution, people that run from wars, people that are threatened because they fight for human rights and democracy elsewhere. And we really need to receive them with open arms. So many people that built up Europe after the Second World War, they were only there because they could go to the United States so they could survive and come back. And other countries should have the same privilege. Uz toliku političku aktivnost za pretpostaviti je da Hana ima sjajan ispušni ventil. Ali kladimo se da niste ni sanjali koji. I try to go climbing once a week. When I, I'm in holidays, I try to go climbing one, like a whole week, like the serious big Alps climbing stuff. Um, like the big walls, the 500 meters big walls just start at 6 in the morning and well, you hope you get back before it gets dark. It doesn't always work out, but most of the time it does. Um, I actually love it because with the climbing you really need to focus on the stone, you need to focus on your body. It's like having a puzzle, like where can you put your hand, where can you put your feet? And so you're like 100% in focus and that's an experience I love and 
that actually often gives me strength also here in Parliament. Also, it's usually it's only guys and me. <laughs> it's the same a bit here in politics, especially as I do security politics. So it's like you come there, they look at you like, okay, who are you? What are you supposed to do here? And then you still need like five or 10 minutes to show them, okay, I know my shit. So that's a bit comparable in climbing as well. I za kraj, što bi Hanna željela od Zlatne ribice? A music festival in the old city of Mosul. Just to prove that, I mean, ISIS is really gone and we can show it to the world. And that's one. The second one is climbing in Saudi Arabia as women. Because it's starting slowly, but I just want to make sure it stays. And the third one, watching polar lights, finally. I naš turistički obilazak se približi o kraju. Nakon posjeta dvama parlamentarnim kafićima, gdje nas je najviše oduševila cvjetna livada na podu, došli smo do centra svih događanja, velike dvorane parlamenta ili hemicycle, kako ga svi zovu. Why they choose a circle? I think it's also psychologically that circles is that everyone can see each other. So no one is having their back to one another but you see that you have the podium, you have the president, and then you have the political groups sitting from on the, on the political spectrum from right to left. And then in the debate, you have the council, so representing the member states on the right-hand side, and the commission sitting here on the left-hand side. Because of course, representative from the other institutions, you know, triangle I told you about, they are also present for the debates. I na kraju, ono što nas sve najviše zanima, kako ljudi iz raznih zemalja koji sjede u ovim europskim klupama utječu na naš život u Hrvatskoj. Well, the European Parliament is a co-legislator with the Council, with the EU governments, and it is co-legislator in almost every area that affects your life, actually, uh, when it comes to clean water, clean air, cleaner cars, uh, combating climate change, when it comes to using your mobile phone, roaming, making sure that your consumer products are safe and that the products that we import uh, are safe, that the food we eat is safe, amongst other things. The reason why we can buy our products from the supermarkets and we can trust the quality and the standards of the supermarkets anywhere in Europe is because the European Parliament, in conjunction with the Commission and with the Council, we worked on several uh, regulations to make sure that every European has access to good food, good fruits, vegetables, good quality, we can trust what we buy. So this is something that we can actually do for, um, uh, from an, a Portuguese MEP to a Croatian friend um, and the opposite as well. My work has an impact on your health on the way you will be protected from cancers, on the way you will get the correct medicine if you need it, on the way you will have a secure environment, on the way your country will be able to follow the rules to make sure that you are not in danger and that if you get a disease, you will be treated correctly as well as in a larger country, for instance, uh, in France or in the US. I hope I was able to give you a bit of insight of what uh, the life of an MEP is. Uh, in the end, we are all normal people. We have uh, our personal, private and professional lives. Um, but what I want to, for you to take from this uh, program or from this intervention is that Europe matters um, and you can play a role in it. So we need all of you and uh, I hope that uh, you can come and can visit Brussels or Strasbourg and know a little bit more about the European Union. So we've come to the end of the tour. I hope you've enjoyed this visit to the heart of European democracy, the European Parliament. I hope you've learned some new things. I hope you've become more curious about what the European Parliament does and the European Parliament and its members works for you to make your uh, life better, to improve our lives. Uh, and this is what democracy is about. Thank you.